Um, all right, I'm really excited to introduce you to this first panel. So first up, we have Jeff Smith, PhD, um, who is the VP of Strategic Initiatives at 15.5. So Jeff believes that experimentation, resilience, and compassion are the keys to solving problems and thriving at work as well as in life. As the VP of Strategic Initiatives at 15.5, he leverages his doctorate in cognitive psychology and previous leadership roles in learning and development, strengths-based assessments, product management, and design to build innovative offerings and improve business outcomes for 15.5 customers. Jeff co-invented the aspirational workplace transformation process and is co-inventor on 15 issued patents regarding the future of user experience, productivity, and customer experience. We are so happy to have you with us today, Jeff. Uh, Jeff is going to be joining conversation with Jenny Yang, who is the VP of People and Culture at 15.5. Jenny believes that when leaders create this, the conditions for inclusive and psychologically safe work environments, team members can feel seen, heard, valued, and perform at the best work of their lives. As VP of People and Culture, she provides strategic counsel on organizational effectiveness, talent strategy and development, and change management. Jenny is a strategic and operational consulting leader with over 12 years of experience designing business strategies and driving organizational transformations for Fortune 500 companies. She's a certified master practitioner in transform, transformational neuro-linguistic programming, TNLP, as well as a leadership coach and facilitator who helps unlock the potential of individuals, teams, and organizations. They are going to be in conversation with our own amazing Rob Rebar, who is Power to Fly's community and events lead. Rob, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Meg, and welcome, Jeff and Jenny. Super excited to be here today. We're big fans of 15.5 here at Power to Fly. In fact, we have an upcoming webinar that we're doing in partnership with 15.5 coming up at the end of this month. And my colleague, Sanmaya, will drop that link into the chat for anyone who wants to attend that. Uh, but, you know, starting off, I'd just love to hear a little bit more, Jeff and Jenny, about, you know, who you are, where you are in the world right now. Uh, and what brought you to 15.5. So Jeff, you're, you're at, in a beautiful outdoor setting. So let's start with you. Uh, thank you so much, Rob. And thank you, Meg, for just bringing such amazing hype person energy to get this started. Like what a wonderful event. So thrilled to be here uh, with Power to Fly, huge Power to Fly fans. Um, and thanks, Rob. Yeah. So um, where I'm at in the world right now, I'm in Sedona, Arizona. I was saying uh, in the green room, I drove in last night in the middle of the night and I've never been here before. So I'm extraordinarily grateful for the view behind me that I woke up to this morning. I'm really grateful for that. Um, what brought me to 15.5 is actually very related to the title of this talk uh, because 15, one of the things that attracted me so much to 15.5 is our belief in you know what we call best self management, and people can uh, are always on this journey of being and becoming their best selves. And I was really struck by a phrase that um, was brought up to me by our, our chief culture officer Shane Metcalf, but it's a quote from someone else, and it's that this idea that everyone is both a masterpiece and a work in progress, and that combination of recognizing that like we have extraordinary power and possibility right now, like everyone who's here right now can do incredible things, but then also realize that we're a work in progress. We're on this growth journey. And it's such an honor uh, to be at 15.5 where we're creating technology and education that help people along that journey. Um, at work and beyond. And I think that we're seeing, you know, in this new world of remote work and more hybrid work and blending flexibility, we're sort of reminded that uh, work is really an important part of our identity as people. And people want to do good work. People want to make progress. They want to work on things that matter. And I'm so grateful to be able to do that with my work at 15.5, serving, you know, all of our customers and learners. Awesome. That's amazing. And Jenny, how about you? Where are you in the world and what brought you to 15.5? Thank you so much, Rob and, and Meg. Uh, so such an honor to be here with Power to Fly. Um, we leverage uh, Power to Fly at 15.5 and it's been an incredible, you know, partnership uh, on both sides. So um, yeah, so I'm currently uh, in Missoula, Montana. Um, wish I had some mountains behind me. <laughs> You walk across the other side of my house. And, um, you know, what brought me to 15.5, um, I just got to say, is my heart. And when I think about my career path, um, I started out in, in healthcare, 
um, really passionate about the work that I was doing with physicians and nurses and, you know, clinical staff and non-clinical staff. And then, you know, at a point in my career when I was going from, you know, early days of, you know, tech customer success and management consulting, I realized that, you know, I think my heart is elsewhere. I think my heart is with um, developing leaders and helping humans be better humans. And so it sort of led me to, um, I was living on the East Coast and I moved to the Bay Area and I started my tech startup journey and you know, went to a couple of startups and you know, might not have had the best cultures. And so then that really evoked this next um, inquiry about, okay, you know, let's really double down on what it is that I'm really passionate about. Um, again, the human side of development and leadership development. And that is where um, I came across 15.5's um, in-person meetup called Humans Not Resources. And I went there um, a little over, it was probably three and a half years ago. And um, I, that's where I met uh, Shane Metcalf, our co-founder, uh, chief culture officer. And in an instantaneous moment, I was like, I have to work here. <laughs> this is the place that I need to be. Um, so that, um, that ignited, um, you know, my relationship with Shane. And, you know, a few months later, we got coffee and that coffee chat turned into a job opportunity um, to help Shane scale the customer success team at 15.5. So I started at 15.5 a little over three years ago, and it's just been the most incredible journey where, you know, I've been really able to look within myself, understand what it is that I'm strong at, what are my strengths, how do I align that with my role, what are the business needs, and how might I apply not only my strengths, but my zone of genius um, to uh, what the business needs are, and to help solve um, problems not only for the business, but also our customers. Um, so yeah, that's just what brought me to 15.5. Thank you. And I love that phrase, human, not resources. And that kind of brings me to the what I was just thinking is, you know, before I joined uh, Power to Fly, like the three other companies I had worked for beforehand, never really had an HR department. And and the last company, you know, then someone, someone joined as HR, but we never really did employee review process. And when I left that company, I remember my boss saying to me, oh, I wish you had come to me earlier and said, you know, that you were not happy here. And I said, well, I wish you had come to me and asked what I had wanted, which never had happened. So I'm curious, you know, how does 15.5 help uh, companies really help their employees really uh, achieve their best selves? And how are you doing that, especially through technology, especially in this increasingly remote world, as you referenced? Yeah, excellent question, Rob, and like the perfect tee up for um, one of our features, which is called the check in. Uh, and like, I, I really feel um, with you on that situation that you described where it's like, well, why didn't you notice that I was so unhappy? You know, like you're my manager, like, and I think just this is an aside from this, but I think one of the challenges that many organizations have is that they do not hold managers accountable enough for being proactive in that situation. You know, many managers uh, today are player coaches. They only have a few direct reports. Like they have so many individual contributor responsibilities, but they also need to still be taking care of their people and noticing just someone's basic, you know, engagement level or disposition is something that they should be doing. And one way to do that is through technology, of course. So uh, 15.5 includes a number of different uh, products that are intended to help with what you're talking about. One of those is uh, relates to our manager enablement, which includes things like our check-ins, which are regular asynchronous, um, just answering some questions about, you know, how you're feeling at work, you know, what's going well, what can be improved, what are your wins and challenges. Our check-ins also prompt you to give high fives and high fives are a really simple tool for giving uh, peers or your manager uh, recognition. And you're making me think too, that it should also be a little bit about recognizing oneself. Like it should be okay to take a moment and really savor and recognize one's own progress. And then that check-in is completed by a team member, but then also, uh, it's reviewed by a manager. So what we're attempting to do there is facilitate this regular, meaningful dialogue through technology. And then that feeds into our one-on-one -on -one so people can be having these regular, meaningful, real-time conversations as well. Many times, one-on-ones between a manager and a team member are sort of like a throwaway status update. Like, 
you know, if you were my manager, Rob, it's like, well, you know, hey, Rob, hey, Jeff, um, how are you? I'm good. How are you? How's the how's the business or how's, you know, your goals? Oh, they're fine. Like, how's that project we talked about? Oh, great. Did you talk to so and so? And it's like, yeah. And like, it's this terrible throwaway thing. And what check ins do whenever they're using combinations and one on ones take that to a different level where there's a regular meaningful conversation about like, hey, are you making these progress on goals? Here's some feedback that I have from you. How can I unblock you? How can I support you? How can I make sure you feel seen like, hey, I noticed um, you know, you reported on this in your check in, like I noticed you want to talk about this and it's a co owned meaningful conversation. And then that is, you know, feeds into some other things that we have uh, and goals and goals are something that, um, you know, John Dewar and measure what matters sort of resurrected some interest in OKRs, which is great, but goals are really, really important because they ensure that people are working on things that matter. Like you want to come into work and know that you matter as a person as well as your work matters. So by tying in goals to one-on-ones and check-ins, it allows you to make sure like, hey, I'm working on something that matters to our business. Here's how. Like I matter here. And that's so important. And then we have uh, reviews as well. And reviews, again, are that zooming out. And we encourage people to have reviews based on performance, but then also based on individual development. So whenever you start using all these pieces in combination, you can see how like, oh, there's a system here from my manager uh, to, it's, it's easier, it's simpler, but then somehow it's also more effective. If we're just like, okay, so we have these goals, we know you're working on something that matters, we have this regular dialogue, we have technology to prompt and encourage these conversations. The uh, conversations have these questions that were very intentionally selected based on science in the science of positive psychology, positive organizational scholarship, organizational psychology, to make sure you're having those right conversations in an ongoing way. And really one of the benefits is preventing that exact situation you described, Rob, where that employee, an employee maybe is, you know, languishing or burnout or disengaged or feeling not seen, you know, maybe for weeks. And then that turns into months. And then it's like, oh, we haven't had a meaningful conversation in a year. And then the person's like, oh, I'm going to work at Power Fly. It's going to be amazing. And it's like, what happened? And it's like, well, you never talked with me. You never helped exactly. me feel and appreciate it. So those are just some of the ways that our technology supports that type of connection. Yeah, that's great. And Jenny, my, my question for you is, you know, kind of piggy, piggybacking off of what Jeff just said, you know, about having employees be seen. I think there's a fear as we move into this hybrid remote world and, and Power to Fly recently ran a poll that showed that the vast majority of our community, and we had 4,000 respondents, are looking to either be remote or hybrid in the near future. And I think there's an, a fear from both employees and employers that it's going to be harder to see people when we're in that virtual world when you don't have that human connection. So I'm curious how, you know, is 15.5 kind of changing that paradigm in, in that way and, and obviously doing it through technology. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Well, well, first I wanted to add a little bit on to what Jeff was sharing about our um, performance review called what we call the best self review. And I actually wanted to put a testimonial of one of our team members here in chat and, you know, I don't, I'm, I feel that the majority of people perceive, you know, performances reviews as this time of like, oh, this is cumbersome. I have to like, you know, take this time and self-reflect and look back and, you know, potentially look forward. Um, and, you know, the way that we encourage our team members to um, really reflect on their own selves is to, you know, go to a place that inspires them sort of like Jeff's background here, you know, take the time, be present and um, set, set some dedicated time and just really um, look within and celebrate your successes, um, you know, since the last review and also um, going forward, what are your visions for yourself? What are your aspirations? And so we're really intentional about the questions that we're asking in these reviews. They're oftentimes more future uh, forward looking. Um, so yeah, that is another way that we support our, our team members to um, really find their best selves and discover their best selves. Um, I did want to address your question, Rob, around um, the, the piece on uh, having people feel seen in a um, hybrid um, and or remote environment. So um, in 15.5, um, Jeff had mentioned the 
the high fives and that's the employee appreciation recognition of being able to just give this virtual you know kudos and high five uh, to another team member and what's great about that is that there is this dashboard of high fives and you can see who's up on top of the leaderboard in terms of giving high fives and receiving high fives and you can react to them as well so we have you know emojis in in 15.5 that you can react to um, any of the high fives anything that's placed into um, the check-in as well. Um, so that's a way to be able to asynchronous, asynchronously interact. And, you know, as someone who um, has been a manager at 15.5 for the past three years, the way that I acknowledge my team members and see my team members is, hey, I'm reviewing your check-in, I'm being present with it, and I am, you know, adding emoji reactions, I am commenting, you know, this is me acknowledging all of the incredible work that you've done across the past week, celebrating you, and also providing some moments moments of coaching, you know, where might you need a little bit of help? Where might you be having challenges? Also giving um, constructive feedback as well. So um, I would say all of that is done asynchronously through the technology in order to best prepare for the most meaningful dialogue in that live one-on-one, um, whether it's digital or in person. That's great. Um, yeah, that's really interesting to know. And, and kind of leads me into the, what else I wanted to ask you both, which is, you know, it's really, you know, if you anyone who's been reading this in the in you know different trades it's really a candidates market right now um we're kind of in entering this period after this pandemic of this great rehiring that a lot of people are saying so anyone from the hiring side who's on but also the talent side who's listening to this you know there, there's a lot of jobs out there uh and a big part then of a talent side is also retention and that's actually what our um panel will be with you all in July. So really wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, one of the big ways of, you know, that retention plays in is really having an employee discover, you know, their true potential. And I believe you all call it a zone of genius, which is great. So I'd love for you just to talk a little bit more about how 15.5 can help employees discover their zone of genius and how that might potentially help a client retain their employees and have them elevate within the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is really um, relevant to me because we are currently testing a feature internally that will be um, ready publicly um, very shortly. Um, it is called the Career Hub. And this is where um, a team member will have this profile that outlines their strengths and you know, their aspirational uh, career title, what that aspirational job description is. And the other aspect of this is it is um, an exercise around energizing work. So taking the current job description and the responsibilities and uh, rating each um, responsibility with energizing levels. Do you uh, feel not that energized by this or do you feel extremely alive with this responsibility? So that helps um, a team member get the clarity around, you know, what parts of the role really make them feel come alive. Um, and then that is um, the next step there is having a conversation with the manager about that of where might I be able to double down in my current role, right? And to leverage my strengths and to um, do more of the things, take on projects um, that really make me feel alive. Um, and so that allows the team member to get not only role clarity, but it increases their level of psychological safety, um, given that they are, you know, aligning on all the responsibilities with their manager. It's very clear about what the expectations are in their role. Um, and then from there, it's, you know, I would say it is a bit of a a role crafting, you know, negotiation, um, you know, once someone is, you know, really thriving in their role, really, um, you know, highly competent in their role and thinking about what is the, my next play? What is my next play in this organization? And that's where, you know, this exercise of, a size of identifying and understanding business needs is really important, right? Because it's one of those things where you can't necessarily just be like, oh, okay, I just want to do this at the company with, without the context of, you know, the business needs um, and what problems are, are needed to be solved in that given moment. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll tee it over you, to you, Jeff, if you have anything else to add there. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. And it's a great, it's a great question, Rob. Um, I think one thing about Zone of Genius that comes to mind and Zone of Genius, there's a great book by Laura Garnett. And we have podcast episodes on about this on our best self management podcast. Um, and then also there's a great book called The Big Leap by uh, Gay Hendricks that also talks about Zone of Genius. 
one thing that came to mind as Jenny was talking is the fact that discovering your zone of genius, um, it has some like aha and eureka moments to it, but also it has some like, I'm doing this type of work and it feels good or an energizing, or it feels, you know, uh, de-energizing or exhausting. So one of the things that 15.5 does, in addition to like best self kickoff and like having these conversations that Jenny's talking about is it allows you to um, discover through action and discover through progress. So as you're making progress, as you're receiving feedback and recognition, as you're reflecting on um, the small wins you've had and what's challenging, I think that helps you almost um, thinking of, you know, creating a statue from a block of marble, right? You're chipping away at like, what does my zone of genius look like? It doesn't always just come to you like in this flashball moment. It can be like, oh, I, you know, looking back at the past quarter, like I realized that like whenever I'm engaged in uh, creative work, that's whenever I'm really feeling so energized. And like, even maybe collaboration doesn't feel right for me. Maybe you end up being um, maybe you end up being a bit more of a isolated creative in your zone of genius at that moment in time. Um, I'd love to jump on this uh, question from the chat, if that's okay, Rob. Yes, Great. that this is a really juicy question from the chat. Yes. And uh, our CEO, Melena Owe, says that one of the hardest things in terms of feedback is giving feedback up the up the ladder, which I definitely agree with. And we have a question from our audience that is, how can we as employees take the issues that we have with our managers or employers without being worried about getting reprimanded for the same? Um, does 15.5 have any specific tech for that? So definitely kind of giving that feedback up while you know retaining that safe space. So love to throw that to uh, our panel. Yeah, I love that question. Uh, do you mind if I start, Jenny? Okay, great. So um, excellent question and very common. And one of the reasons that this is so common in my mind is that uh, there is no organization on earth where every single person feels psychologically safe on every single topic at all times. So it is really important to set up the structures that people can be uh, providing anonymous feedback. Uh, we currently don't have any anonymous feedback structures, but what I would argue is um, just as important is having uh, systems that normalize the giving and receiving of feedback. And 15.5 does that. 15.5 completely normalizes the idea we talked about at the beginning around like, hey, you're a masterpiece, you're making progress, you're doing these things, but you're also a work in progress. What's going well for you? What are these challenges? Managers and employees are weighing in on each other. Teams are weighing in on each other. You're celebrating what's going well. You're talking about what can be improved in this ongoing normalized way. We also have a feature called request feedback. So I would encourage organizations to encourage their leaders and managers to invite feedback very publicly, but then also to request feedback very specifically from time to time, because we can all learn and grow, you know, whether you're day one uh, intern or 40 day or 40 year founded the company CEO, like we can all be learning and growing together. Uh, and then importantly, within our engagement survey, you have the ability to ask a structured set of questions, but then also to provide confidential feedback that's qualitative as well. So organizations should be ha should have this regular uh, cadence and calendar of gathering feedback. And not just between team members and managers, but also between team members and the organization. And our engagement survey allows for that to happen because you give the quantitative feedback on these science-backed questions, and then you can elaborate with qualitative feedback that comes in um, with a little bit of context on like where you are in the organization, but that's you know pretty private. Um, and then also, if you're having a challenge with a specific individual, um, I really encourage you to um, try to have a conversation with them about it that's based on uh, what we call observations uh, at, at 15.5. And we, we, we somewhat loosely call this idea of feedback, best self feedback, but observations are sharing what you actually saw, heard, and noticed. And you're coming in with this really clear intention of having a conversation that's strengthening and uplifting the relationship. Netflix calls this seeking to assist, but by sharing what you saw, heard, and noticed, and then you can get into nonviolent communication and crucial conversations that allows for this dialogue to happen in a way that's different than if, you know, someone came to me and they're like, Jeff, you're a terrible manager. Like instantly 
I'm on the defensive, but it's like, Oh, Jeff, you know, I noticed this, or I noticed that then it's like, Oh, you know, maybe I have a blind spot there. I I have thousands of blind spots, even as someone who thinks about this stuff all the time. So I think addressing that question is a multi uh, faceted approach. Some of it's technology, some of it's process. uh, And some of it is intention, like setting that intention for the organization. Like, Hey, we're going to be a place where we can learn and grow together and from each other. Yeah, and I'll just add um, to the engagement piece of it. So um, 15.5, we recently acquired um, engagement measurement, a company called Amplify, and that happened in late April. So it's been really exciting. We're coming up on our 90 days of you know integration. And um, I, I did want to just uh, elaborate a little bit more on, on the engagement piece where um, there are 17 drivers and they fall under these buckets of work experience, you know, manager, leadership, coworkers. And so um, absolutely, um, you know, when people are going through the survey, going through the questions, they are able to, as Jeff mentioned, add that, you know, confidential context in any of those areas and drivers. Um, More specifically with the manager um, drivers, they include feedback, um, they include um, just rating the manager, um, and also there are several around leadership, such as leadership availability, fairness, um, leadership integrity as well. Um, Psychological safety is also a manager driver there, so I just wanted to um, just uh, dive a little bit deeper into that one. I mean, it looks like we have another question here. Yes, we're just about out of time. But if you, Jenny, if you want to touch on this question real quick, which is kind of around, um, you know, getting offering feedback, uh, how do you deal with mainly but not just white men offering feedback to women that amounts to open insubordination? So maybe a little bit of that psychological um you know, safety that you were mentioning. And we're almost out of time. So maybe this will be an abbreviated answer. And we can look to 15.5's website for maybe a little bit more detail afterwards. Yeah, yeah, I would just say, um, you know, um, to double click on what Jeff said around, um, you know, I guess it's, it's, it's learning about, well, I actually will go back to um, the relationship um, specifically with the person that you might be in conflict with or have feedback around. Um, 15.5, we do also have this feature called the best self kickoff, which you can have um, this incredible dialogue to start off any relationship. It doesn't even have to be manager employee. It could be, you know, you could have the same questions for team member to team member of just getting to know each other as humans and, you know, starting to root down in uh, and build a deeper relationship. And part of that is, you know, that conversation is understanding how does one like to receive feedback? How does one, um, you know, like to receive recognition? Um, And so it's just level setting about, you know, different expectations that people and being able to adapt and customize to, you know, one person's preferences there. So I would say, um, you know, building a a stronger, deeper relationship by having that, that conversation. I do think that's key because I think the old way of thinking of was, you know, like, let's do this. We do, we're going to do the same thing for everyone. Right. But like, we really are coming to realize, okay, different people function in different ways, especially as we move into this hybrid world where we know, okay, some people function better, you know, maybe being left to their own devices and other people maybe need a little bit more hand holding. So I love that there's this kind of customization to 15.5 to really work with different people in different ways. I think that's gonna be really key to the future of work. And I definitely wanna thank you both for your your time today. Um, Definitely encourage everyone to check out 15.5 um, and their website, see what they have to offer. If you're an individual contributor, um, you're maybe, you know definitely you know explore it, recommend it to your managers if you think it's something that's right for you. And also want to encourage everyone to check out the webinar series that 15.5 is going to be hosting later this month. It's all about how we can support and uplift uh, team members. Power to Fly is very happily partnering with them for the second week of that series. We'll really be talking about employee growth and retention. So that link should be in the chat. Uh, If not, maybe Sam Maya can post it there again. It's a free series. So definitely encourage everyone to check that out as well. So Jeff, Jenny, thank you both uh, so much for your time today. And uh, Meg, we'll we'll send it back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Uh, that was an absolutely wonderful uh, chat. So thank you so much, Jenny, uh, as well as Rob and Jeff.